In this video, we're going to talk about spiritual abuse within Christianity and how to properly heal from it if experienced. Let's get into this topic right here on Keeping It In Context. So what is spiritual abuse? Spiritual abuse is when a person or a group uses religious beliefs and their religious influence to manipulate others into performing behaviors and making decisions which meet the personal and selfish interests of the abusive person or group. It is the use of spiritual authority or religious doctrine in order to coerce, uh, control, or exploit people. Spiritual abuse often happens in many different forms and in many different ways, such as but not limited to intimidation or instillment of fear, isolation, uh, positional power control, verbal, physical and sexual misconduct, financial exploitation, pressuring of conformity to extra biblical rules and regulations, public shaming, excommunication, censorship, information control, and gaslighting. Spiritual abuse can happen anywhere. It can happen in churches, by leadership, or by members, or it can happen at home amongst family members, spouses, and towards children. And many who do uh, experience these ways and different forms of spiritual abuse end up with a lot of traumatic consequences. Some who remain in these spiritual abusive environments end up staying in them because of seeing no way out and will allow the spiritual abuse to continue. Others who do leave those environments end up with serious physical and mental health issues such as but not limited to PTSD, OCD, disassociation, and depression. Many end up abandoning their faith in God completely and even committing suicide because they have failed to find proper healing from the abuse. Spiritual abuse, just like any other form of abuse, is a real and serious problem and not only needs to be addressed but needs to be fully recovered from in order to live a life of productivity in Christ. And so with that being said, and as someone who also dealt with spiritual abuse, I want to share with you seven ways um, that can help with receiving proper healing from the terrible pain of spiritual abuse if it is experienced or if you will experience it in the future. The first way to help with receiving proper healing from spiritual abuse is to never suppress the feelings caused by spiritual abuse. Being able to heal from spiritual abuse requires that you be honest with how you feel and with how much pain you believe that spiritual abuse has caused. Uh, suppressing your pain by, by ignoring it or by acting as if it doesn't exist may seem like a good way to cope with what has happened, but it really will do more damage um, to your well-being than good as time goes on. One reason is that suppressing the emotional effects of spiritual abuse does not allow for personal closure. It doesn't give you the opportunity to process everything properly in order to come to a place of finality both mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. Another reason is that by suppressing your emotions, it actually increases your stress levels. It takes a lot of work to keep your feelings down or, or hidden. You have to constantly live in denial and play a role or create an identity that is not real or genuine. But because the emotions are still present and we can only play those roles for so long, if triggered at the wrong time and in the wrong place, those emotions can become intensified and acted upon in a more dangerous manner. If you have been spiritually abused, you need to allow yourself to process your hurt and your pain in a very truthful and honest way. Never feel bad, never feel guilty for the various uh, emotions that you may develop or have after being abused, uh, whether it's sadness, uh, confusion, anger, um, loneliness, um, vulnerability, shame, all of those emotions um, need to be addressed both to yourself and to God and needs to be processed without fear. Which leads me to the second way to achieve healing from spiritual abuse, and that is to identify that the fault of being spiritually abused does not lie with you. Sometimes those who suppress their pain of spiritual abuse do it because of a personal belief that somehow they are responsible for what happened to them. They'll say things like, if only I could have discerned the deception and the manipulation earlier. If only I wasn't so weak. If only I was more spiritually mature. Maybe if I just speak up sooner, none of this would have happened to me. Why was I so loyal to those who abused me? How could I be exploited, blinded, coerced to do all that I was doing? If only I had made better choices in my life, God 
wouldn't have allowed the abuse to happen. These and many other conclusions arise in our minds when we feel the need to blame ourselves for the spiritual abuse. But the reality of the matter is that there is nothing about you that caused the abuse to happen. Nothing about who you are or what you did or didn't do can ever make abuse your fault. Being abused in any way, shape, or form is solely because of the abuser's desire to abuse. Whether you think you were in a vulnerable situation, whether you think you were too naive or too weak or too unspiritual at the time, none of those things gives license for anyone to take advantage of those moments and commit abuse. No one in a leadership position in a church, for example, should use their position to manipulate, coerce, shame, degrade, or conduct themselves toward those who believe they must be in submission to them. No one who claims to be spiritual should use their knowledge of spiritual things to exploit or to shame someone else who may lack in that area. No spouse should take advantage of the other spouse's loyalty and abuse them and use scripture to support such behavior. If you are a victim of spiritual abuse, never believe or accept the reason for your abuse to be because of you. All forms of abuse are due to the self-interest and beliefs of the one who was doing the abuse. The third way to receive healing from spiritual abuse is to remember that those who spiritually abuse do not represent the true nature and character of God, nor the true faith of Christianity. Because certain religious leaders and groups are either looked at or are instructed to be viewed as a divine extension of God, many wrongly believe that their relationship with their abusive person or group um, and their relationship with God are one and the same. Within the culture where spiritual abuse often occurs, you will often have these ideas uh, being promoted or instructed that the leader is the oracle or mouthpiece of God. The leader is a man or woman of God specifically sent into your life to be your greatest godly example. Therefore, you are to imitate the leader's life and behaviors just like how Paul said to imitate me as I imitate Christ in 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. And as a result of these implemented ideas, it can make it hard for those being abused, especially if they grew up in such a culture, to make a distinction between God and their religious leader or group. To receive punishment from their leader is to receive punishment from God, therefore it's acceptable. But this, however, is false and it is a distortion of the actual role that spiritual leaders or spiritual leadership plays in the life of God's people. Yes, spiritual leadership ought to be honored and respected, but they are not to be placed on a platform that puts them on the same authoritative level as God. When it comes to receiving healing from spiritual abuse, one has to be able to separate the two. Being abused by a spiritual leader or by an abusive group or by your spouse or by a family member uh, does not mean that you have been abused by God himself. Uh, your individual and personal relationship with those who abuse is separate or it needs to be viewed as separate from your individual and personal relationship with God. God's nature and character does not bring about shame, guilt, or embarrassment. He does not exploit you or use his power to manipulate you or to um, take advantage of you when you're in your most vulnerable state. Those things actually represent the nature and character of Satan, who, who we know is called the adversary of God and his people. John chapter 10 and verse 10 says, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I, the Lord says, come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep, which leads me to the fourth way in receiving healing from spiritual abuse. And that is to recognize that Jesus Christ personally identifies with your abuse. You see, the reason why Christ can identify with your spiritual abuse is because he himself experienced an enormous amount of it from those of supposed spiritual authority during his time on earth, namely the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. It was at their hands that Jesus dealt with name calling, public shaming, humiliation, manipulation, verbal and physical misconduct, shunning, abandonment, excommunication, and ultimate death. The very people who were supposed to be supporting Christ, even in his most vulnerable moments, were the very same people who ended up taking advantage of those opportunities. Just like you, Jesus went through spiritual abuse even while he was dying on the cross. And that is why 
you don't have to feel alone or disconnected from God when it comes to your personal and particular experience. Hebrews chapter four and verse 15 says, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. And just as Jesus was able to rise from the grave and overcome all of that abuse that he suffered by the Spirit of God, we too can rise again and overcome and receive complete healing from the spiritual abuse that we suffered by the Spirit of God as well. The fifth way to receive proper healing and recovery from spiritual abuse is to educate yourself about issues related to spiritually abusive behavior and the various techniques that are used by spiritual abusers. Whether from books dedicated to addressing spiritual abuse or from professional counselors or therapists or doctors who deal with trauma and abuse or from the survivors of spiritual abuse. Getting educated on spiritual abuse is extremely important in getting healing and restoration. Educating yourself about spiritual abuse from these resources will help you to number one, prevent yourselves from being gaslighted by the abuser or by those who support abusers. Many times these individuals will deny that what they did to you was abuse and will try to convince you that what happened to you didn't really happen the way you thought it did. However, by learning and studying spiritual abusive behavior, it will guard you from such a tactic. Number two, it'll help you to discern and to avoid falling into the same abusive patterns in the future. You'll be able to detect and spot the signs and the red flags of spiritual abuse more easily than before. Number three, you'll be able to educate others who may be dealing with spiritual abuse as well. Believe it or not, there are many who do not know who to turn to for help when they are spiritually abused and need assistance from others who have gone through the process and have been able to overcome. Number four, it empowers you to bring further awareness and expose spiritual abuse. There are many religious groups which have a habit of covering up spiritual abuse, especially when it's done by their own leaders. However, for the sake of the gospel, the truth, and also for the sake of hundreds of thousands of unspoken victims, it is important to expose spiritual abuse whenever it occurs. A genuine church or a religious group should never cover up abuse of any kind. This is why Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. The sixth way to receive healing from spiritual abuse is to leave that spiritual abusive environment. Any spiritual abusive environment is a dangerous place to be. And although it may seem like a, a difficult thing to do, maybe because of longevity or because um, of the connections and relationships that have been established over the years, true uh, healing and true restoration cannot be achieved if one does not remove themselves from that environment, especially if the abusers are unwilling to change and the abuse is continuing. If you are in this situation and you know that it's time to leave a spiritually abusive environment, here are a few things to keep in mind. One is that leaving a spiritual abusive environment does not mean that you are leaving God. And number two, it does not mean that you will be cursed or that God will not be with you after you leave. Now, I know these may sound a bit strange for some, but these are some of the threats that are made by many of these abusive groups to try and put fear in people's hearts for attempting to leave. One must have peace and understand that there are other churches and other Christian groups that do have safe and healthy environments where your faith can grow and where you can have a genuine friendship and fellowship. This may take some time, of course, as it is a big transition uh, to make, but with patience and prayer and God's guidance, finding such a healthy environment can and will be achieved. Just be sure to educate yourself about spiritual abuse while um, in this particular process. And then the last way that I'll mention in this video about how to properly heal and recover from spiritual abuse is to forgive and keep moving forward. Obviously, we can never erase the memory of abuse, but we can learn to slowly let go and move forward in a new direction away from the places and the people who cause such pain. By giving all of your emotional hurts to God, you can learn to release your anger, to release your pain, to release your guilt, and even your hatred that you may have been holding on to so that the memories of the abuse can be rendered useless as you move forward in your life and in your relationship with God. Ultimately, um, the spirit of forgiveness can give you uh, mental, emotional, 
and spiritual freedom. Luke chapter 6 verse 28 says, bless those who curse you and pray for those who despitefully use you. Definitely a hard saying from Jesus to embrace and to obey at times, but it is a necessary one if we're going to receive proper healing from spiritual abuse. Well, that's it for this video. Obviously, there is so much more that we can talk about um, regarding this subject, but we'll leave it at that for now. Um, if you're interested in some good books to read, here are some that I would recommend. The Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse by David Johnson and Jeff Van Vonderen. Wounded Faith, Understanding and Healing from Spiritual Abuse by Dr. Neil Damgard. Bully Pulpit, Confronting the Problem of Spiritual Abuse in the Church by Michael J. Kruger. Is It Me? Making Sense of Your Confusing Marriage, A Christian Woman's Guide to Hidden Emotional and Spiritual Abuse by Natalie Hoffman, and Understanding Religious Abuse and Recovery by Patrick J. Knapp. And of course, if you like the content, please like, share the video, leave some comments below. And if you haven't done so already, uh, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell as well so that you can stay up to speed when I drop a new video. And as always, as you go back to study that word, just remember to remind yourself that as I'm studying the word, I gotta make sure I keep everything in context.